Thank you, Mr. Bing. Every May, at the annual commencement ceremony, we look back at the past 365 days to recognize the academic achievements of our SBMI students. This past year, 41 SBMI students earned their master's degree, and three students earned their PhD degree. In addition, 96 students finished their graduate certificate studies in biomedical informatics. And many of them are going to continue in the master's program, or potentially even the PhD program. As always, I'm very proud of the students for achieving their goals. To date, SBMI has 34 doctoral alumni, 327 master's alumni, and 299 certificate completers over the past whatever years. So 20 years ago, in 1997, a young lady at the age of 71 was thinking about what to do over the next 20 years. She created a school that brought computer science and information technology to medicine. And she's Dr. Doris Ross, the founding dean of our school. Dr. Ross is a true visionary. 20 years ago in 1997, Google's two founders were still working on their PhD at Stanford. And in 1997, Steve Jobs was not back to Apple computer yet, and Apple as a company was literally struggling to survive financially. And your iPhone would not be ready for another 10 years. And Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, he was only a middle school boy at that time. So how did Dr. Ross come up with the idea of starting an informatics school? I never got a clear answer before she passed away in 2015. But one thing that I know for sure is that Dr. Ross was a club member of several movie theaters here in Houston, and she went to movies almost every week. And I assume she was a fan of James Bond and she watched all the Star Trek movies. You may or may not know, many innovations that we have today were literally conceived in Star Trek, including your smartphone, the tablet computer, and the famous all-purpose, all-powerful tricoder that can make all kinds of medical diagnosis. So what happened over the past 20 years? Our student enrollment grew from 14 to 323. That's a 23-fold increase. Guess what? This is on par with the performance of Apple Computer's stock, which had a 24-fold increase during the same time period. So the past 20 years, are truly an age of acceleration, not just for our school, but for the entire human civilization. By 2003, the entire human civilization created five exabytes of data, five with 18 zeros. In 2011, the same amount of data was created in two days, and today, in 2017, it takes one minute. 10 years ago, only about 10% of medical records were on computer, and today is almost 100%. And 15 years ago, the cost of sequencing one person's genome was sufficient to buy a Boeing 737. And today, you can trade your iPhone for your, for your own personal genome. And in about 10 years, 20% of world population's genomes will be sequenced. Today, 40% of the world population have smartphones, and it will double in several years. 
a smartphone you have today is five or more times more powerful than the most, fa most powerful, fastest supercomputer Cray in 1975, which was used to do the rocket design weather forecast. So literally today in your pocket, you have five supercomputers that can do almost anything that you can imagine. So the last 20 years are also an age of disruption. So I'm holding my phone now. I use it when I walk, when I stand, when I sleep, when I eat, even when I meet with people, even with Dr. Carl Soto. I do not apologize because this is part of my brain, part of your brain. You can get an answer to almost any question you have on the first page of Google search. And a street vendor in Nigeria, for instance, can access more information than President Kennedy could, and in real time. So every time when I give a talk, I always ask audience, who is still hand writing letters to their parents? To my surprise, there's always one person. <laughs> so today, I do not want to ask this question because I want to see those hands coming up. So literally, many years ago, a handwritten letter would cost a cheeseburger. It took two weeks to arrive at my parents' home. And today, you can do that in real time by email, text, Facebook, WeChat, whatever. It's in real time. It's free, and you can attach pictures and video. So that's the kind of interruption we have for communication. And also, Amazon knows me better than I know myself. Literally, I buy books recommended by Amazon after I bought my book on the same topic because the books rep recommended by Amazon are typically better than what I bought. And today, the biggest taxi company is Uber. And Uber is actually an IT company that does not own any taxi fleet. It's the biggest one in the world. And also, the biggest hotel company in the world is Airbnb. And again, it is an IT company that does not own any property. So I have a paper check in my wallet that has not been touched for a whole year. If you want to deposit the check, you take a picture with your phone. And nearly all the routine banking activities can be done online and remotely and by your phone. So I'll give you one number here. It's kind of surprising. So in China today, 695 million people use their phones to make payments in stores. That's twice of the population of the US. It's everywhere. So be besides information access, communication, retail, travel, and banking, information technology is also disrupting the education. So among 42 SBMI students who got their master's degree today, 22 did so completely online. And 12 of them are here today. I don't know if any one of you comes here in person for the first time. So basically, online technology education make high quality informatics curriculum training available to a lot of people in Texas, across the nation, and in the world. Uh, they can do that at any time and at their own pace at any location. So medicine is the last industry that has not been fully disrupted yet, but it's happening now at this moment, especially with recent breakthroughs in machine learning and artificial intelligence. So actually, my iPhone can understand my accent better than many of you can. If I have a problem with my speech, turn on your phone. You can get help. <laughs> so with real-time video, video image processing, uh, Google's driverless cars have no difficulty merging into the busy traffic in San Francisco. And computers have outperformed the best human players in chess, Jeopardy, Go, 
And actually, as you just read article today, the computers can make better predictions than people for the decisions made by the Supreme Court. So if you want to find a lawyer, ask a computer first. And also, computers can read skin images and can categorize the skin diseases as accurately as dermatologists today. And the X Prize Foundation just announced their award winner for the Tricoder competition. So a team of brothers, literally one ER doc, one engineer, they developed a small device on iPad with a few connected sensors. It can measure 15 medical conditions, and they claim they can diagnose 90% of cases for people who go to the ER. So over the next 20 years, we will see a larger wave of disruptions driven by machine learning and artificial intelligence, especially in medicine. Ben Sessi, US Senator of Nebraska, recently wrote a commentary in Wall Street Journal, literally two weeks ago. I want to read this to you. It's very interesting, very important. I am a historian, and that usually means that I'm a killjoy. When people see we are at a unique moment in history, the historian's job is to put things in perspective by pointing out that there is more continuity than discontinuity that we are not special, that we think our moment is unique because we are narcissists and we are at this moment. But what we are going through now, the past 20 or 30 years and the next 20 or 30 years, really is historically unique. It is probably the largest economical disruption in recorded human history. So today, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of our school. To prepare for the next 20 years of disruptions, if you want, no other gift is better than a permanent home dedicated to the school. The construction of a 45,000 square foot building for our school just began last week. I would like to ask all of you to join me to thank Dr. Cotasoto, who made this a reality. So this $15 million building is a huge investment by UT Health and by the state of Texas. The phenomenal growth of our school, especially over the past five years, is not so much due to our riding of technology wave as due to the vision and the strong support of Dr. Carlosota, who sees not just the past 20 years, he is a fortune teller who can see the next 20, 30 years. I want each of the graduates sitting before me today to think of what impact you want to have on biomedical informatics and healthcare over the next 20 years. Some of, some of what you learned at SBMI will become obsolete in a few years, especially in the rapid changing technology environment. But the interdisciplinary thinking and the skills of lifetime learning you acquire from SBMI will prepare you well for anything you do in the future. SBMI faculty, staff, honorees, guests, family, and friends. Please join me in applauding these graduates and the many accomplishments they will earn over the next two decades.